Hey men, and welcome to another episode of the thesecondatom.com, thesecondatom.tv. We've been in the realm of the science of prophecy. That's what we're going to talk about this evening, so thank you for jumping on board. Do me a favor, if this is your first time here, subscribe to this channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, be sure to follow us, like us. If you're watching this on thesecondatom.com, be sure to put your name and email address in to receive our updates. Now, Prophetic ministry is is vital today. It's absolutely vital in the world we live in. The last few weeks, we've talked about the science of prophecy. We've talked about the the ways that uh, God speaks. Amos three seven that He does nothing without revealing without revealing His secret to the servants first, the prophets. Uh, John ten twenty seven we hear His voice because we are His sheep. So. And last week, if you missed it, go back. We talked about one, the ways that he speaks. He speaks through dreams. A dream can be a warning, an encouragement, symbolism, the audible voice in a dream. We gave examples. Open vision, visions of our mind, impressions. And I want to talk about this today. We talked about this. Growing in the gifts are accomplished in action. And I want to talk about that. Taking the words of the Lord and going forth with it. Going forward, listen, there's a big teaching today about law of attraction. And the law of attraction, the New Agers say, well, the universe, well, if you just think about what you want, the universe will bring it to you. Christians go, well, if you just think about it, and it's not the universe that does it, it's God that does it. Do you realize when it gives you a prophetic word of destiny, that there's usually a, a place of faith, amen, faith without works is dead, there's a place of moving, there's something you need to do? So we're going to talk about that today. To move into that prophetic destiny. Now, look at this. We see in part, we know in part, thus we prophesy in part. I, I don't know how many emails uh, I receive a week, people that are seeking prophetic words, people that are seeking prophetic counsel. And so what? here's the key. When you receive a prophetic word, whether it's a, a, a one word, whether it's a paragraph, whether it's a vision, honor that word because God is speaking through it. Amen. When you receive a word, when you receive a word, ask God to God. Ask God. Now, if you receive a word to give to somebody, some of you watching this are prophets, ministers, and, and so some of you have received prophetic words for other people. Ask the Lord, is this to be released or is this to be released later? Is it to be only prayed over? God gives me things that sometimes I'm to pray over only. He may show you something about a person, a situation, and... I know I'm going to pray over that. And so that's what I do. I take time and I pray over it. There's been some, maybe some of you, I've reached out on Facebook. I said, the Lord has really told me, I feel like it's shared for me to pray for you. And some of you responded back and it's been great. Some some people have, hey, never responded back. Some blocked me from Facebook. Oh, there's the weirdo. Amen, it's the prophet. But that's okay. Maybe that word still released unto them will give an effect However, sometimes we're not to release that we receive the prophetic word. We're simply to prophesy or we're simply to pray. What I mean by prophesy is prophetically decree over them. Now, when you're given, um, when you're receiving or when you're judging, and listen to me, judge every prophetic word. I said before, judge isn't bad. To judge something isn't a bad thing. To judge it means to test the spirit. Amen? Is it coming from a place of condemnation or a place of encouragement? Is it coming from the flesh, coming from the spirit? Because we all are human and we do prophesy. Our our intent is to prophesy fully from the spirit. But the Holy Spirit comes through this flesh and the flesh at times can come out. I'm just telling you. So when sometimes some of you held on to prophetic words for years, You need to let go of because it wasn't the word of the Lord. You need to ask for confirmation. If it hasn't come true, it seems like it's against everything that's happening. Say, Lord, I need to see the word. Also, I need to see a confirmation of the word. Number one. Number two, does it line up with the scripture? The logos. The logos is the written word of God. It's the written word of God. Does the prophetic rhema word line up with it? Does it bear witness with your spirit? Does it bear witness with you? Amen. Amen. Is it encouraging, edifying, exhorting? Is it confirm? And then here's another key. I want to jump into this really quick because some of you are watching this. You're going, I know how to hear the voice of the Lord. I know I received the word. And you're jumping to go release the word. There's something called protocol. If you're doing this in a body of believers to maybe a church, a conference, if you're doing it even one-on-one, ask for permission to release the word. 
There's times in our local church I receive such a word of the Lord and I want to release it. But A, I usually do not go to the pastor. I say, Lord, I'm gonna, I received this word. I'm just going to I'm going to release it in spirit in my own self. I'm going to pray over it. I'm not going to release it into the body and unless the pastor asks me to. But at the same time, there's times when uh, I, maybe I will and say, hey, I feel like it's a word for the body. Submit to protocol. And if he says, not now, or she says, not now, this isn't the time for this word to be released, listen, submit to authority. Amen. There's always somebody to submit to authority. Elijah and Elisha. Amen. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that Jesus can increase. Amen. So find a mentor. Here's the biggest key. If you haven't signed up yet, if you have watched this, if you followed our ministry and haven't signed up as a prophetic partner with us yet, jump on board. The link is below. Here's why it's important. The third level, you'll get on the phone with me once a month, and we are going to minister over you. We're going to prophesy over you. We're going to mentor and disciple you into new levels of your prophetic destiny. Amen? Come on. I can give you testimony after testimony of people that ask blessed. I would love to be your mentor on that. So, now here's a question I get a lot. Pastor Wayne, what if I miss it? What if I prophesy the word of the Lord? What if I release the word of the Lord and I miss it? Will I be labeled a false prophet? In fact, I think I really would love the title of this one to be, What is a False Prophet? Let me explain to you what a false prophet is. And we're going to go through, in fact, if you look in the book of Revelation, says, and this is very important, the testimony of Jesus Christ in the spirit of prophecy. So we covered that, I believe, in week one, maybe week two. So as you go in, you look at that, as you, Revelation, is Revelation 19.10. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So how do you know a false prophet? Number one, a false prophet isn't one that simply missed a prophetic word. Yes, we pray for accuracy. We pray for the vision or the word that we receive that we can portray it in a way that is communicated effectively. Amen. However, if you miss something, it doesn't mean you're a false prophet. There's a, there also, you're maturing as a prophet. Some of the maturing as a prophet is when to release a word, when not to release a word. Some of the maturing as a prophet is learning to ask for, uh, submitting to authority that you may release it in the right season. Maturing in prophetic destiny and maturing in prophetic ministry is also learning to hear and see clearly to have an a, a accuracy increase. Amen. So, but what is a false prophet? A false prophet is based on Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus Christ, but they testify, they speak of, they live out, they show they're an example of a Jesus that is not the true son of God, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. That's why Islam, Islam is a false religion. Islam, listen, Muhammad was a false prophet, period, period, because they prophesied. He prophesied of a different Jesus than the son of God that we hallelujah know is the savior, that is the creator. They prophesied of a different God, of a different son, a different son or different, different, different Jesus. They prophesied of a different Jesus. So, what does that mean? The testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy, but the testimony of a false Jesus would be a false Jesus, a false prophet, a false prophetic spirit. So if if anyone is really confused, is Islam really evil or, they, or what's going on with Islam? They believe a false prophet because they're defined of a different Jesus than the real Jesus. Also, um, it isn't just Islam. It's anybody that truly goes against our Lord and Savior. That's what Paul said. I preach for Jesus Christ, him crucified. Amen. You know, Jesus came to Paul and rode to Damascus. Why do you persecute me? Why do you come against me in my body? Because he was truth. He was, he is truth. Jesus is truth. Amen. So a false prophet will testify of Jesus improperly falsely, and it's not just other religions. We have false, Christ, false prophets in the Christian arena as well. They prophesy the Jesus of their own understanding, a God of their own understanding, instead of the God of the Word, God, hallelujah, of the Spirit. Amen. So, now, when we talk about false prophets, here's one of the things I love, and I use this as an example a lot. If you were to take 10 people, let's say an evangelist come into town, Okay, you take it, you laid up, lined up ten people, 
and the the, the evangelist the the, uh, the guest speaker came into town he's a healer and he, he moves into gifts of healing and he prayed for 10 people he prayed for one prayed for another prayed for another prayed for another and on the 10th one on the 10th one he prays the spirit of god falls and they're healed amen guess what that's going to be captured on facebook live youtube that's going to be all over the internet hallelujah and it should be praised amen it should be but they're going to look at that one that was healed and now all of a sudden we have a great healer everybody's going to want him to pray for them even though nine people didn't get healed okay now take 10 take the same 10 people line up the prophet the prophet prophesies over this one the prophesies over this one reads this one mail opens up and shares the, the, the heart for this one and for nine in a row absolutely blessed and on the 10th one he says something that doesn't line up he prophesies but he misses it all of a sudden oh false prophet in the house it's so amazing i've seen this happen i've seen this happen yeah, you know, in prophetic ministry, sometimes I'll receive a vision. So I may, if I'm praying for a gentleman, I may receive a vision of a woman. Now, unless you, as you mature in this, you'll recognize to to ask who that is or to see if the Holy Spirit reveals. But sometimes somebody will say, "I see your wife with you," and and they start prophesying, and then they all say, "Wait a minute, I'm not married. I'm not married. I have no wife. You're a false prophet." See, nine prophesied correctly, or prophesied correctly over nine, missed the one, and they're a false prophet. Why? Why is there such a um, a judging spirit, and I said the judge is not bad. Why is there such a ridiculing spirit against the prophet maybe that missed one, but not the healer that missed nine? Because this is where Paul said, Seek ye all spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy, because prophecy changes lives. Amen. Listen to me. Prophetic gift. It is a gift of prophecy. There's, an, there's, an, there's a seat, hallelujah, as a, there's a Wow, there's the apostle, there's an office of an apostle, the office of a teacher, the office of a prophet. But you may not be a prophet, you can still prophesy because that is the gift. Seek ye all spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. So, if the prophetic gift is a gift, it's not earned. Amen. How do you receive a gift? How do you receive a gift? You say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I'm a sinner. I receive salvation. Give me my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. And you receive the gift of eternal life. Lord, I see in your word that I'm to seek all spiritual gifts. So Lord, I'm asking for the gift of prophecy. Just as I ask for the gift of eternal life, give me the gift of prophecy. That I may encourage, edify, and exhort others. Speak mysteries unto the world and transform lives. Amen. Lord, give me the gift of healing. The same. Amen. Come on. And we are going to look at this deeper and deeper as we go into next week. And next week, actually, we're going to talk about the prophetic gift. We're going to talk about the impartation of the gifts. In fact, next week, we're going to go into impartation. And I'm going to give you several passages through the word, through the logos, amen, about impartation. It's the lost art of impartation. I can tell you, the people that have prayed for me in impartation, I, all of a sudden, my, my the spiritual gifts within me, some were awakened immediately, immediately. Some, uh, especially some of the prophetic giftings. Some of them started nurturing, and they're still nurturing today, but the seeds were planted. So next week, we're going to talk about impartation of the gifts, and then we're going to go into prophetic exercises. So, so much we're going to cover here. I just wanted to speak to you about today, moving through the signs of prophecy. I wanted to keep this one short because I really want you to grab a hold of that false prophets are not just a, someone that missed it, but somebody that is prophesying of a false Jesus. And the reason there's such a, a backlash against those who miss it, those who are maturing and growing in the prophetic, is because Satan hates the prophetic. Satan hates the prophetic because he wants you to be discouraged, unmotivated, and moving in a place of lack. God wants you to be encouraged, edified, and exhorted to move forth to bring the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Come on. So here's what I want you to do, guys. I want you to go, guys and gals, go back and listen to this message. Understand, understand that some words are going to be released immediately. Some you're going to pray over. Some will be released at a later date. That when you're giving, you're receiving, or judging a word of God, it should always edify. It should always encourage. It should always confirm. It should always 
line up with Scripture, not your not your understanding of Scripture, the truth of Scripture. Amen. Should always glorify and lead people to Jesus. And if you need a mentor, Elijah and Elisha, John the Baptist, Amen. Decrease that Jesus may increase. If there's so many, so many. Areas in here we can see in the Word of God of mentors, people that disciple, partner with this ministry. I'm very bold about that. I make no apologies about it. Go to the secondadam.com forward slash partner. Three levels, two of the three, you will get prophetic counsel from me. The third level, we're going to talk and we're going to coach and we're going to counsel and we're going to prophesy over you. Amen. If you thought about it, jump on board. And I want you to go back and just say, Lord, will you give me the gift? Now, next week, we're going to talk about the gift more. We're going to talk about impartation of the gift. But will you pray? Will you pray for the Holy Spirit to just activate that within you? I'm going to pray for you next week. I'm going to pray for you a spirit, a prayer of impartation next week. Now, a couple of things on the thesecondadam.com. Number one, thanks for following us, our fellow kingdom seekers. Amen. If you haven't paid your tithes yet, go to theofferingplate.com. Your tithes are very important here at the ministry. We're using them to expand the kingdom of God. Your tithe is the first fruit. When you sow into the kingdom of God, amen, that first fruit, you're redeeming the rest. Amen. And when you sow into the kingdom of God, the Bible says every seed produces after its own kind. So your tithes and your love offerings, amen, will produce a harvest back into your life. That is the word of God. If you need prayer, go to thesecondadam.com forward slash prayer. Post your prayer request. I'm going to ask you to comment below also. If you're going to post a comment, post your prayer request. Our prayer team will read over the comments. Again, if this is on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, uh, on the second item, wherever this may be, post your comments below and you will receive that information. Also, after months and months and months of the liberation software issues, I pulled up my Roku today and there was the second item. Now, I'm not going to release the official link for about two more weeks because they're still doing some updates on the side of Roku side. But it's like we're finally going to be on Roku. So pray for open doors that people that are sitting at home in front of their smart TV and in front of their Roku, that they can just Google, they're not Google, they can type in church. They're going to find us. They type in Christianity. They type in the prophetic. They're looking something more than just another sitcom that we're going to be able to reach them through that. So thank you all for your prayers on that. If you have any prayer requests, I said, please post them below. As I said, post them on the internet. We're going to pray for you there. Go to theofferingplate.com for your tithes, love offerings. Join us and be with us next week for the prayer of impartation. Do me a favor, click the share button. Share this video with someone you know. I believe in you because I believe in the Jesus Christ in you. God bless. To be able to minister personally with the pastor of this online church by text and phone, that is amazing. Partnership with this ministry is a great idea. If you're tired of feeling stuck in your life, then go ahead and coach with Wayne. Partner with the ministry and watch your life change. I highly recommend becoming a partner with this ministry. Um, you know, the mentorship program is just the best decision you could ever make. So, uh, so yeah, thanks again, Wayne.